What is up, guys? A Tiv here. And in this video, I will be talking about my NFL Week 12 predictions. And we have Evan Matsudo with us here. So, what's up, Evan? Hello. All right. So, so, do you want to hop right into it? Yeah. All right. So, our first game is the Saints at Falcons. I think that Raheem Morris, he's been doing a really good job at the Falcons interim coach. I think that, honestly, he should become their head coach. But I think that the Saints are just unstoppable right now. Like, they held Matt Ryan to, what, a sub-50 pass rating, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And their defense has been insane. So I just don't see the Falcons winning. Like, if Julio Jones is back, then I think that the Falcons will have a much higher chance. But it's just that the Saints, they've been looking unstoppable. And if Taysom Hill can play how he played two weeks ago against the Falcons, then I think that the Saints will have this one very easily. So I got the Saints as well. Um, Falcons, their offense has been kind of inconsistent, especially that run game with Todd Gurley. He hasn't really been producing the numbers he really wants to. And then like Julio Jones, inconsistent with injuries. And the Saints have been just doing pretty well, especially with Taysom Hill as well. That new playbook style too. So I got the Saints here. Yeah, agreed. All right, so our next game is the Browns at Titans. So, Evan, you can go. So, I got the Titans going up here. Um, Derrick Henry and his run game, it's been going really well. But also, like, their pass game with A.J. Brown. is A.J. Brown's been doing much, much better. Um, the Browns' defense, I just don't see them stopping both these the offensive players. but might be a good matchup to see. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I have the Titans here as well. A.J. Brown, of course, he had over a 1,000 yards in his rookie season, and he's definitely going to get over a 1,000 yards in this season as well. Derrick Henry already has over 1,200, which is what most people's whole season is like. And Evan still doesn't want to put respect on my boy Derrick, but that's for another time. Derrick Henry's just built a different. His O-line is insane. And I think that this will be one of the best rushing matchups we're going to see. Like, the NFL made that video about Derrick Henry versus Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Now, while I do think that the Browns' backfield is better than the Titans, I think that the Browns, if Jarvis Landry can play even half as good as how he played last week, then I think that the Browns can make this a pretty competitive game. But the Browns just, they can't win against competitive teams and the Titans are one of those. But I think that this will be a very good challenge for the Browns, but I don't think that they'll be coming out as victors. So our next team is the Lions at Bears. And I have the Lions here. Honestly, the Bears just, what, are they on like a five-game losing streak? Their defense just cannot get things together. I think that their defense, they're sucking out the suck of the offense. And now... The offense and the defense, they're both tra- – oh, the defense isn't trash, but Aaron Rodgers – I mean, it's Aaron Rodgers, so, like, it makes sense. But Aaron Rodgers lit up that defense. And I think that that just took all the confidence out of the Bears' defense. And then the Bears' offense, Allen Robinson's the only good player on that offense. And just don't even get me started on that offense. Mitchell Trubisky's again going to start. And boy, oh, boy, he doesn't even have an IQ for football. I mean, like – I don't know how he did. Actually, I'm not going to say many bad things about Mr. Risky, but the point here is I have the Lions winning. I think that it will be an upset. And I just, I can see the Bears winning and I can see people thinking that, but I just don't have them. So this time I got the Bears going with the W right here. Um, I think oh. they pro- I think they might bounce back right here. Um, the op- Their offense really hasn't done much at all, especially last week. Um. Their defense might just be the one that carries them with Allen Robinson as well, but I think the Bears are going to have a bounce-back game against their division rival here. Yeah, I see I see you with that because it's the Lions, you know, and they're a top-five worst team in the NFL probably right now. But I just think that the Lions are becoming pretty good, especially now that they fired Matt Patricia. Next game, we got Bengals at Dolphins, so Evan. So I got the Dolphins. Um, 
They're my favorite Madden team to play with. So oh my god! They were, that thing. Xavier and Howard, amazing season. Oh, and no. then, <laughs> and then, uh, anyway, the Dolphins. I think Fitzmagic, if two is not going to come back this week, I'm not sure, but I think Fitzmagic is going to do his thing and. They just got a lot of good receivers out there. Like Jakeem Grant is really, really fast. He also plays special teams. So I think they're going to do very well against the Bengals now that Joe Burrow um, is out for this, out for the season. Um, I just don't see the Bengals coming away with the W here. All right. So Evan is built different with the Dolphins and Madden. And Xavier Howard, in my eyes, he's been having the most underrated season of any player this season. I mean, this dude already has seven interceptions. The most last season for the whole season was six. Seven interceptions is what most people get in the whole season. I'm pretty sure he has still like six games left to play. He could get 10 or 11. The most in a season is 14. So he could get close to night train lane. But I have the Dolphins winning. I think that this should be a pretty easy game for the Dolphins. I mean, what the Bengals are playing with, what, Brian Allen? What a stud he is, you know? So... And I doubt Joe Mixon's going to be back either. So, yeah, this team's just not looking very nice right now. They're looking pretty shabby, and I think that the Dolphins will come out on top. So, our next thing, we got the Jags at Vikings. The Jags is basically a free dub at this point, and the Vikings, they've been playing pretty well, although they did lose to the Cowboys. I was a fluke in my eyes. Like, Dalvin Cook, I don't know if he'll be playing or not, but if Kirk Cousins can play half as good as he did last game, then the Vikings should be good because Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins is a great duo in the making. And then you, of course, have Adam Thielen, who, while he did not play last week, I don't think they needed him because they won, you know. So, Evan? I got the Vikings as well. Um, I think they have the momentum after that big win last week against Carolina. Um, like Atif said, Dalvin Cook may or may not be playing, but – if the Vikings can maintain a good offense, they're they're probably going to lock in with this win. Um, but also their defense needs to be able to stop James Robinson. I think he's like the second leading rusher in the league right now. Yeah, third. Third, yeah. So they need to stop the run, and then I think that's pretty much a locked-in win right here. Agreed, agreed. So for our next thing, we have the Colts at Texans, a rivalry. All right. So I got the Colts winning it here. Um, I think now that the Texans unfortunate for them, but it was all on Will Fuller for now, um, getting suspended for the rest of the season. I think the Colts are going to do something great with that defense this game. Um, they they need to get pressure on Deshaun Watson to win it um, because you can't just let him stand there in the backfield. But – I think the Colts can do that, and their offense, not the greatest, but they're not the worst. So I think they can do their thing out there. Now, see, I have the Texans winning. And while they haven't won against any amazing team, I think that what they have like a three-game winning streak right now or something like that. So I think that they will make it four. They'll improve to, what, five and seven maybe. Um, That's amazing for the Texans. I'm very happy for them. Like, D. Watts, Deshaun Watson – Brandon Cooks and Deshaun Watson, I think that Brandon Cooks will have a great game. And while the running game hasn't been much, I think that J.J. Watt, he honestly could do some great stuff. And Bradley Roby did get suspended as well for the rest of the season. Same reason for Will Fuller. But it's sad to see, you know, but now no one knows if Will Fuller is actually that good. Like, he, he obviously wasn't that good in his seasons prior to this season. But now we don't know if it's because of what he did. He took drugs, of course, or if it's just because he's actually good. But I honestly think that the Texans will come out on top. The Colts, sure, they have an amazing defense, but their run defense did not look very good last week. Phillip Rivers, I don't think that he'll be getting pressured much because I think he's gone stacked the second lowest among any QB, and they're all lines really good. Quinn Nelson and Anthony Costanzo. So, I don't think that he'll be getting sacked, but J.J. Watt, I think that he could still do some damage, you know, and while the Texans' defense isn't that good, I think that their offense can do pretty good, especially against the Colts' defense. But our next game is Raiders at Jets. Not much to talk about here. I think that the Raiders should be getting the dub, especially they're going to be very mad coming off of that Falcons game. 
Yeah, same thing here. I'm going with the Raiders. They're going to have a bounce back game. May probably a blowout, but you never know about the Jets. They might make it close like they did with the Patriots game. Yeah, And you never know about the Raiders. Like they can beat any team on any given week and they can lose to any given team on any given week. But our next game is Giants at Seahawks, so Evan, go. I got the Seahawks here. Um, Daniel Jones is out for this week. Um, other than that, the Giants really don't have much of an offense now. Um, when they had Colt McCoy in for Daniel Jones late in the game against the Bengals, it didn't go well at all. Um, Seahawks, pretty inconsistent at this point. Um, Russell Wilson, I wouldn't say he's MVP anymore. So I'm still going with the Seahawks, though. As much as it pains me to say it, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. Like, Colt McCoy, he's nothing special. Sterling Shepard, basically only good on Monday Night Football. Evan Ingram finally had his one good game of the season. But uh, the running game hasn't been. Actually, Wayne Gallman, he's pretty decent, but... He got 94 yards, but it was on 24 carries. So he did average around four yards per carry, a bit less, which isn't the greatest. But their defense did clutch up for them last week versus the Bengals to secure the W. But I don't think that's going to happen this week against the Seahawks. Like, Logan Ryan, I don't think he'll be able to stop DK Metcalf. And it's you to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett who they're going to guard. They're probably going to guard DK Metcalf. So that means that Tyler Lockett could have a great game, you know? But as much as it pains to say, make me say this, I think that the Seahawks are the better team. I think that a lot of people think that. I don't know how the NFC least is this bad, but, you know, the Giants are number one in that division. I think that the Washington football team will end up being number one, but we'll see. But for now, the Seahawks are sadly going to win. Our next game, this is going to be the game of the week probably. I don't know why it's not Sunday Night Football. But it's the Rams at Cardinals, and I have the Rams winning. The Rams, they had a great game versus the Niners, of course. You know, the Niners, Jared Goff played terrible, which is great to hear. Cam Akers was really their only bright spot on the offense. And the Niners, they're showing how good they are. Like, literally, imagine going five and six when your defense is that injured. That's when you know that Robert Sala is by far the best defensive coordinator in the league. No doubt about it. But I think that the Rams, the Cardinals, they're looking pretty shabby. Kyler Murray, he had a terrible game versus the Patriots, but he did not do as bad as Cam Newton, who got held to like a 23.6 passer rating, which is just terrible to hear. Um, But the Rams, I mean, it's either going to be Cam Akers or the Daryl Henderson, who's going to have a good game on the rushing side. They have that amazing duo with Robert Woods and Cooper Cup and Jared Goff. He's very inconsistent, but I think that this will be one of his better games, especially considering the Cardinals' pass defense is not the greatest. Although they do have a pretty good back, uh, sorry, they do have a pretty good secondary. But the Rams' defense, they've been overperforming everyone's expectations. Like they probably have the best pass defense in the NFL, and their run defense is pretty good as well. But for now, I'm going to go with the Rams winning in this rivalry matchup. So, I haven't won by you. So, I'm going with the Cardinals here. Um, both these teams played pretty bad or not as expected last week. Both of them took pretty tough losses, both by three points. Um, but both I think the Cardinals. Yep. I think the Cardinals are going to come back here with the, with the win. Um Obviously, I think DeAndre Hopkins is now the main um, target to defend, um, but that also leaves some other targets open, like Christian Kirk, and then their run game. Like, they need to develop more, like, read option in there because Kyler Murray's got the wheels to do it, and if you're going up against the Rams front four, that's really, really quick, too, as well. But I think the Cardinals will bounce back. And I think they could light up the scoreboard as well. See, I see you, but I think that Aaron Donald will get his 11th sack of the season as well because the Cardinals O line is not it, you know? But for our next game, we got the Patriots at the Chargers. So I've got the Chargers here. Um, I mean, after that loss to Buffalo, 
they didn't do too bad against Buffalo. If they didn't have those turnovers late in the fourth quarter, it probably would have been either like lost by like three or four points, but they lost that game. But I think that they're going to do really well against the Patriots who really have not been that good at all this season. Um, Defensively, they're not even really performing. (laughs) Um, They, even though they've like, they've lost a few players over this, over the season, the COVID and all that opting out and Chargers defense, Joey Bosa had a great game last week. I think he'll get a bunch of sacks on Cam. Um, So I think the Chargers got this one. Yep, agreed. I think that the Chargers will have this one. Joey Bosa got a career high in sacks with three. He had, what, six tackles for a loss, which is amazing. Um, Joey Bosa, he's a stud for sure. That Chargers secondary, the Chargers defense, for it, if you just look at their, their team on paper, they probably have the best team. I coached by any other team than Anthony Lynn. I think that the team would be much better than they are right now. No offense to Anthony Lynn. But I think that their offense will light up the Patriots defense. Like Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen. That's just a recipe for disaster versus any defense that's playing them. Like if you remember that Chiefs game, their offense was amazing. If you remember that Buccaneers game, if you remember that Saints game, three games that they blew the lead. Oh, and let's not forget the Broncos game. Their offense was amazing in all these games, but the defense lost them the game. So hopefully the Patriots don't get another game winner. I actually want the Chargers to win because I'm just annoyed with what the Patriots have been doing this season. So I think that the Chargers will win as well. Justin Herbert is probably the offensive rookie of the year between him and Justin Jefferson now that Burrell got injured. But I think that the Chargers should be able to win this. Not easily, but it might be easily, you know. For the next game, we have the Eagles and Packers. Eagles just haven't been looking good. Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion, deserves to an MVP over Mahomes. Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams, they're great players on the offense as well. While Corey Lindsley is injured, their O-line is still pretty great. And I think that Mercedes Lewis, he might be able to get a touchdown or two. He's been doing pretty good this season in terms of the touchdowns. And the Eagles, Carson Wentz, probably the worst starting QB in the NFL right now. 15 to 15 for interceptions to touchdowns. That's just ugly right there. And eat Packers, they should be able to win this. Yeah, if you remember that game last year, Eagles-Packers on Thursday night football, Eagles got quite lucky. Um, Packers won't let that happen again. Um so I think Aaron Rodgers is going to light up light up this Eagles defense. I've got the Packers in hand. Um, the Eagles defense, not really doing much. Darius Slade, not 100% at all. I mean, he had a hard, hard time defending Metcalf. And I think he's going to even a tougher job guarding Devontae Adams. And then the other cornerbacks got to guard other guys like Alan Lazard, who has – a really really good season actually um then the Packer D they're just gonna shut down this Eagles D offense I meant so I, I this I think this will be a blowout honestly a blowout I, I I could see that oh and it'll be Richard Rodgers versus his old team <laughs> where he got he's had Hail Mary caught for a touchdown on both of these teams I'm pretty sure which is amazing but for our next game, we have the Broncos at Chiefs. I mean, I don't know how this is the Sunday night game and not the Rams at Cardinals, but Evan? This one's kind of – this one's pretty easy to say. The Chiefs got this one in the books. <laughs> I mean, Broncos, I'm not sure about their quarterback situation, if anyone's even going to come back. They finally got a quarterback, but Kendall Hilton, he's probably better. That's all we really hate. <laughs> um. I must say the start of that Saints game looked okay, and then it, it, things got out of hand. Um, they just – I just feel like they don't really have a chance here against this Chiefs team, especially since Tyreek Hill had one heck of a game last week oh against boy. the Buccaneers. So, it's going to be a tough job for everyone on the Broncos' D. I mean, honestly, though, if I'm going to be really here, there was this thing, like, you can't stop Patrick Mahomes, but you can contain it contain him Broncos defense is very talented I think that they can contain him but the Broncos the Chiefs have one of the better pass defenses in the league 
But the Broncos have a great run, run offense in my eyes. It's Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon had that insane game, I think, with like two touchdowns or something like that a couple of weeks ago. And then Philip Lindsay. I think that, honestly, the Broncos should be relying on their run game a bit more. Well, I don't think that they're going to come anywhere close to the Chiefs. I think that they could maybe score 14 points. But the Chiefs, ah, this is going to be a blow. Let's all be real here. Now for the first Monday night game, the Washington football team at the Steelers. What type of Monday night game is this NFL? I mean, come on now. Steelers are going to win, although they didn't look very pretty against the Ravens. But Trace McSorley got a touchdown, so that's what you like to hear. That was the greatest play of the season by far. And Steelers going to improve to, what, 12-0 and 0 now? Nope, I'm going with the Steelers. They're not my favorite team, but uh, oh boy. we'll go into that later. But it, I'm going with the Steelers because no Steeler wins easy at all. But if the Washington football team gets their run game exploding, then it might be closer than we expect. But Steel, Steelers offense, really, really good. Um, and then their defense really really good as well yeah but I mean I will say the Steelers pass defense is of course better than their run defense although they did shut down Baltimore's pass defense except from when Trace McSorley came in for our next game we got the Bills at Niners baby all right so I got the 49ers here um I root for them as well yes, they're my team um now they got Sherman back and then they got Mostert back. And then they had a great defense. Well. Yeah, Debo as well. Um, Their defense really, really did well. Offense, nothing much other than yeah. Mostert's touchdown. Debo and then like, Kinlaw. 33 yards. Yeah, Debo had a really good game, career high game. Um, the Bills just inconsistent with Josh Allen. Um. Diggs as well, kind of pretty inconsistent as of now. They're gonna Sherman's gonna be put on Diggs, and Sherman's really good at locking down guys as as well. Um, so I got the 49ers winning the Monday night matchup here. Agreed, 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 agreed. Nick Mullins is my only problem with the Niners offense. Debo had a career high in receptions and yards, like you said. He most good. He didn't have the greatest game. He did get a touchdown, but I think that he will have. A great game this week versus that uh, Bills defense, who has been underperforming my expectations. Although they have been getting better at the season, has been progressing. But I mean, I just I'm not sure. I think that the Niners' offense is much better than they are on paper. But when we go to the defense, that defense is still a top five in my eyes. I mean, Javon Kinlaw, like you said, he had that amazing pick six. He was chugging, and then you got Sherman back who had another interception. So, I think that this Niners defense, Robert Saul, like I said, he's by far the best defensive coordinator in the league in my eyes. I think that the Niners, they'll be getting the dub here. And, yeah, go Niners. So, we got Tuesday night football here, 5 5 You don't see that a lot. Cowboys at Ravens. The Ravens, they've been doing pretty bad this season. Like, I don't even know. I don't even think they're the top 10 team in the NFL anymore. But I don't think that the Cowboys – are top 10 team either, of course. I think that they're a bottom 10 team, actually. Bottom 5, even. And I think that the Ravens will be getting the W here. I think that Trace McSorley might as well just be starting. Um, Cowboys, just cowboying along. But Amari Cooper, he had a great game on Thanksgiving Day. If he can do that, then I think that the Cowboys might be able to do something. But Zeke is not looking like Zeke. Although he somehow, I think, still is in top 10 for rushing yards. But Evan... So I got the Ravens as well. Um, both these teams not really looking at good at all. But this is a key win for the Ravens because it keeps them around the wild card area. So if they get this win, it'll be huge. But they they're not really performing. Um, they don't have a really they really don't have a running back. Um, they have McSorley now, probably a quarterback. Um, their defense, I don't know. They just made a lot of mistakes yesterday against the Steelers. Um, 
they're just not looking good out there. But Agreed. just like every Steeler win isn't easy, Ravens wins aren't easy either. Yep. So that is it for this video. Make sure to go sub to Evan. Link will be in the description below. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.